Robert Degans, entrepreneur. Robert is a digital native, growing up around tech and embracing technology in many different ways. His career in digital marketing has taken him all over the world, all over um, from websites, bills to social media campaigns, email marketing, inbound marketing, customer service, and more. His last expedition into the digital world is what brings him here today with his pet project, Reach, an app designed to make to make finding a safe, reliable taxi easier for locals and visitors alike. So we saw an influx of these um, taxi services around Carnival time coming up. So Robert is going to tell us about um, his experience in, in that area. Thank you very much, Shiva. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, panelists. Um, so very, very quickly, so I know we've pressed for time. I'll try to tell this story as quickly as possible. So I created Reach. Shortest description is that it's a uh, very similar to Uber, but we customized it for Trinidad's market. It allows you to select from a network of taxi drivers to go where you want, when you want, at, and at the price you want. Right now, when we build in Reach, a lot of the options. So well, so to start in the beginning, when we originally started this pilot project it was called drunk drivers and we had to do it via I know everybody hates the name that's fine um, we had to do it cash based so I'd have to tell a driver okay you're gonna do this job you're gonna give me ten dollars for it and you're gonna do this job you're gonna give me ten dollars for it I'd spend more than ten dollars trying to find the driver meet him somewhere get that ten dollars very inefficient so we said credit card had to have one right it's more efficient it's safer for both the driver and the customer and it's more secure. We can give cash um, recharges and refunds if necessary. So we looked at the local options and found that generally the stories that we heard from other entrepreneurs were pretty terrible. You either had to have a huge cash reserve to get a credit card facility, or it just really was an inefficient, clunky service that couldn't be integrated directly into the app. We knew we it's a digital economy. I'm not just competing with um, the other companies out there. I'm competing with Uber. So people who come down to Trinidad and want the same Uber experience aren't going to jump out of their app to pay on a different website to come back into the app. It's a very clunky experience. We looked at our two best international options. PayPal, right? PayPal requires both buy and sell to have a PayPal account, which is a little difficult for locals. If you don't have an account in the US, things get really tricky. The 21 day process in time for payments, which in a very, very cash based society, drivers are not going to wait three weeks to get paid. So we couldn't do either. And then a 5.5% service charge bumps up our price way above what we're willing to do. So Stripe. Stripe has this service called Atlas, which I think is the biggest point out that there's a need for services like this in all over the world. Stripe decided that their credit card processing service was so valuable to, and they had so many requests from the rest of the world, that they were willing to set up a company in Delaware for you, on your behalf, to accept payments for you. The problem is, I now have to go and deal with the US tax code. And for a small guy like me who just needs to be able to accept credit cards very quickly to see if my business will fly or fail, it's just not viable. Right? So we decided to use Stripe. It's a little bit of a finagling. We had to have a US um, location. Thankfully, I have family in the US who are willing to take mail and, and thing for me. So I use their um, location. And it's well documented. It's very easy to set up plug and play and in, within three weeks we were up and running accepting credit card payments after testing. So from there Stripe accepts the payments but they don't hold it so we had to use another company called Payoneer and Payoneer is a virtual account with a Visa debit card. Incredibly simple to set up as well. It integrates with Stripe, it's a virtual bank so the money sits on this card so as I get paid I can go and I can buy other things with it. I can go on Amazon and go anywhere and, and go to an ATM and withdraw the cash. Set up again, it's two to three, three weeks. So within six weeks, I was able to accept payments and be able to use, utilize the cash, something that I would never be able to do with the local options or the financial um, institutions in Trinidad. Right? So this is just how the cash flow works. They pay in app, facilitated by Stripe, so all the security I need is there because they're backed in the US and I have that payment security. Stripe holds the payment for just two days and then I can credit my pay in air account. Go and use that money anytime I need it. The fees associated, very, very small. 3%, which is pretty standard, and a 30 cent per successful card charge. No setup, no monthly fees. Now, I reference this because 
doing my research, there are 18,000 SMEs in Trinidad and Tobago. A lot of them, let's be honest, a lot of them are not going to make massive international level, but they're lacking the opportunity to go from small um, cottage businesses to medium size and larger because there's not that opportunity. Um, Minister Melford, Minister Nicholas mentioned that there was, there's, you know, three times the market. If I can't accept credit cards here, I can't accept credit cards there. I'm losing out three quarters of my entire market um, that I can possibly sell to. So the drawbacks we ran into, they're both Stripe and PayPal require either US, UK or Canadian address. So something that not everybody has access to. If you're homegrown, you don't have family out there, even though with 45 million diaspora, it's hard to believe that no one has family in the States. Um, and again, the US bank account, it ends up being you're paying taxes two and three times before the money gets to you. And usually, it's not enough money for people to be so concerned about, you know, gosh, I'm going to have to pay tons of taxes on this money. The businesses just need the opportunity to thrive, and they don't have it right now. So we realized something after all this effort. This wasn't really the solution. Because there's only 220,000 um, credit cards in a population of 1.3 million in Trinidad. That's a huge, well, it's a very, very small minority in the market. Most of them are, well, not most of them, a lot of them are multi-card card holders within a family. A family might have one or two or three cards. And it doesn't necessarily solve the issue of uh, general debit card holding public, being able to pay for these things online. You st we still have an ATM card that doesn't have a code on it, that doesn't allow me to swipe at various terminals without having this machine. Right? So what we found is our three keys to success to make this really, really viable for everyone, make it universal, right? With be, being able to upgrade our local debit cards, the Visa debit cards, or the like, make it safe, bring in the legislation to protect customers. What I've noticed is that the banks, the government, in all fairness, will never move as fast as innovation, right? They're constantly playing catch up in the US as well. And technology is advancing so much faster that people aren't willing to wait for the legislation to come into effect to protect this. They're going to just build build it and use it just like Uber, just like Airbnb. They saw the opportunity, they took it. So yes, we have to make it safe. The legislation has to come in, but it's not gonna wait on the speed of government or the speed of banking and then make it fast in island fulfillments. So this is another thing that, that I think um, Minister Nicholas mentioned, being able to get the, the goods and services. I mean, Trinidad is a fairly, is a small country, but they have people who, would love to buy this product from somebody. I have friends who have problems fulfilling orders from Port of Spain to South. If we can't handle that, we can't handle into island um, logistics until you hit that next level, until you're a bigger business. So I think the, the real issue is that we stuck. The small businesses uh, have a, quite a few hurdles to jump through to get to that medium size and to really take off. So I know this is a very brisk presentation. I spoke very quickly. If anybody missed anything or has any questions, please let me know. Um, but that is my very, very short story on reach and credit card payments within the island. Thank you.